A timid girl shocks the world by mastering an illegal weapon and becomes one of the deadliest fighters in the galaxy. Suleta Mercury is thrust into the limelight on her first day of school when it's revealed that the machine she pilots may in fact be a weapon with a dark and checkered history. A pilot named Elnora participates in a test while in the cockpit of a mobile suit as a team of researchers and engineers of the Bananas Institute assist her through the process. The test starts well but she soon hits a bottleneck. While she advocates for forcefully pushing through, the head scientist by the name of Dr. Cardo Nabo stops her, claiming it's not worth crippling her. While the two speak, Elnora's daughter, Eri, enters the lab. Mama! Erica scolds her for sneaking in despite numerous warnings, but Eri is immediately distracted by the giant mobile suit named Lifrith. Lifrith is part of an advanced class of mobile suits called Gundams, which use gun technology to link human pilots to their suits for enhanced control. Worries of high pilot mortality due to stress from the link and fear that Gundams could use military asymmetry between Earthians and Spatians lead people to call for gun technologies to be declared illegal. Worried that fears of Gundams would render all their research useless, the folks at the Institute become determined to create a special Gundam that wouldn't harm its pilot. Lifrith had been the fruit of their labor. After the failed test, Elnora and Eri go home where Eri's father Nadim awaits them. While Eri eagerly calls for them to bring out her birthday cake, the two discuss the tests and their hopes that they can succeed before the Mobile Suit Development Council makes a move to stop them. Meanwhile, on a distant asteroid, the Council hold a meeting where they declare the end of Ox Earth, the parent organization of the Van Addis Institute and celebrate the fact that Earthians will now be put in their place. Back on Falkvanger, the asteroid housing the Van Addis Institute, Nadim receives a call before the family can cut Eri's birthday cake. He's informed that the Council has announced a press conference much sooner than anticipated thanks to a man named Delling Rembrandt. As he and the others on Falkvanger tune in, the Council announces that they've decided to freeze the development of all Gundam-type mobile suits and will forcibly seize the company behind their development Ox Earth. Dr. Cardo asks her crew if there are any ships arriving today and is told there is one entering port. She immediately orders for its entry to be prevented, but it's too late. Soldiers under the command of Dilling enter Folkbanger and begin killing everyone on sight, including Cardo herself. Nadine tells Elnora to flee with Eri while he holds the enemy off with a Gundam. He and another pilot manage to destroy several enemy mobile suits but both are slowly picked apart by a state-of-the-art non-Gundam mobile suit called Pegor Bo. Elnor and Eri go inside Lifrith's cockpit where the Gundam picks up on Eri's vitals and successfully clears bottleneck that had been stumping the Vanadis researchers, much to Elnor's shock. The two leave Falkbanger in Lifrith and they're attacked by three mobile suits whom Eri effortlessly destroys. Outside, they witness Indeem losing his battle against Kananji, the pilot of Pegor Bo. Before his death, Nadine grabs Pagor Bo, pulling it away from Lifrith, allowing his family to escape. His final act is to sing happy birthday one last time to the oblivious Airy. Happy birthday to you. Many years after the massacre at Falkvanger, a young girl by the name of Suleta Mercury goes over a checklist of all things she needs to start her studies at the Astacasia School of Technology. A voice announces that she is five minutes away from her destination. So Suleta turns on the mobile suit she's sitting in, which she lovingly calls Ariel, and observes her surroundings. While staring in awe at the magnificent feat of engineering that is the school, she notices someone stranded in space. She flies over an Ariel and pulls the person into her cockpit. Instead of thanking her, however, the individual, a young woman, angrily tells Suleta she had nearly pulled off her escape before Suleta's interference. While Suleta stares in confusion, the girl, Moirene Rembrandt, daughter of Delling Rembrandt, tells her to take responsibility. Sometime later, Suleta finally starts her day at Astacasia and is greeted by Nika Nanaura, a second-year student. Suleta spots Moirene walking by and nervously introduces herself, while publicly proclaiming she will do what she can to help her escape much to Moirene's chagrin. Before she can respond, their conversation is interrupted by a mobile suit duel involving Ghul Jeddak, the school's best pilot. Ghul easily defeats his opponent and emerges from his mobile suit, 
haughtily proclaiming to Moirene that she will soon be his. Seeing Suleta's confusion, Moirene explains that everything in Astacasia is decided based on duels, a rule established by her father. Since she lost a duel against Ghoul, she agreed to become his fiance. Meanwhile, in a meeting of the Banerit Group, a major conglomerate composed of different mobile suit manufacturers, Delling, who serves as president, highlights the three highest earners of the group, as well as the lowest earner. He unceremoniously expels the latter company from the association, forcing it out of business. With the meeting concluded, he exits with an assistant following behind, who informs him that he has assigned two agents to keep an eye on Moirene. The man wonders if Delling would like to meet him, but Delling asks why he would waste his time on something so pointless, and walks away. Back at Moirene's place on Astacasia, she and Suleta are having a conversation when Ghoul interrupts them and tells Moirene to come live with him to prevent any further escape attempts. When Moirene refuses, the infuriated Ghoul starts breaking her belongings. Despite her nervousness, Suleta intervenes and challenges Ghoul to a duel to make him apologize to Moirene. The whole school watches as their duel begins and Suleta, using Ariel, defeats Ghoul with complete ease. Initially shocked, Moirene regains her calm and taps Soleta's uniform with her student notebook, changing its color. She announces that with this victory, Soleta is now the new holder of Astacasia, aka being the number one pilot, as well as her fiancé, much to Soleta's bewilderment. Ariel's performance in the duel immediately raises everyone's suspicions and the mobile suit is swiftly confiscated under suspicion of being a Gundam. Soleta is also brought into custody and questioned but she repeatedly insists that Ariel isn't a Gundam. The higher-ups of the Banerit Group discover that the machine is registered with the Shinsei Development Corporation, a company within their group. Delling orders a representative from Shinsei to be summoned for an inquiry. The president of Shinsei Corp and Soleta's mother, Prospera Mercury, arrives as their representative. Prospera insists that Ariel is the fruit of Shinsei's newly developed drone technology. She points out that the Banerit group was unable to detect some key characteristics a Gundam would have exhibited. Although Delling is unconvinced and initially orders Ariel's destruction, an unexpected ally argues in Prospera's favor. Vim Jedirk, father of Ghoul and head of one of the three top earning companies of the Banerit group, notes that their group has been losing some market share in recent times. He argues that this novel tech could help them regain their footing. Unbeknownst to the rest, the reason behind Vim's magnanimity towards the mobile suit which defeated his son is that Prospera met with Vim privately and blackmailed him. She revealed she had proof Vim once had plans in motion to have Delling assassinated before ultimately backing out. With this new ally, a decision is made. Suleta is to duel Ghoul once again as long as Prospera provides technical data on Ariel and Suleta wins the second duel, the mobile suit won't be scrapped. With Suleta and Ariel's safety tentatively guaranteed, Prospera hands over the blackmail material to Vim as part of their agreement and the two part ways. Without the sword hanging over the head, Vim orders Ghoul to crush Suleta in the upcoming duel and to once again become Moirene's fiancé for the sake of the company's future. To this end, he has his engineers outfit Ghoul with a state-of-the-art mobile suit named Darabald, complete with an advanced decision-making AI for autonomous operation. Ghoul protests that he wishes to battle Suleta on his terms, but Vin slaps him, saying he has no time for such childish pride. Both Suleta and Ghoul prepare themselves for the duel and arrive at the battlefield. The fight begins with Suleta taking the initiative to attack. Before Ghoul can defend himself, Darabald's AI starts evasive maneuvers on its own. The sudden change in Ghoul's style catches Suleta off guard and the fight becomes evenly matched. While Suleta tries her best to regain the upper hand, inside Darabald, Ghoul becomes despondent due to his lack of agency. Thanks to words of encouragement from Moirene, Suleta takes charge and manages to damage Darabal. Fed up with his circumstances and sensing that his defeat is nigh, Ghoul disables the AI and takes charge. The sudden shift in approach once again flusters Suleta and she acknowledges the strength of this new fighting style before pushing through and defeating Ghoul for the second time. With the match finished, Suleta goes over to Ghoul and apologizes for taking him lightly calling his strength the real deal. And overcome by emotion, he goes on one knee and asks Saleta to marry him. Flustered, 
so Letta immediately runs away, while an evenly flustered ghoul realizes his impulsive action was caught on camera for everyone to see. The next day, a more collected ghoul arrives in Saleta's classroom to apologize to Moirin as part of his deal with Saleta, and immediately runs away after telling Saleta his confession wasn't real at all. With all the excitement over Ariel finally put to rest, Saleta begins attending her regular classes. But when it comes time to participate in practical pilot classes, she receives a failing grade for not having any support staff to help her with ops. She goes around asking people for help, before Maureen catches wind of her troubles and volunteers, after giving her an earful for not asking her. The next morning, the two begin Suleta's pilot test course, but Suleta's machine was sabotaged by two Spatian supremacist girls. Despite giving her best and retrying the course after each failure, Suleta is unable to finish and loses her will to continue. Hearing her cry, Choo Choo, an Earthian girl and a friend of Nika Nanara, goes over to the two laughing girls and beats them up. Although they both fail the test, Suleta ends up making new friends, with Nika inviting her to join the Earth House at Astacasia, despite Suleta being a Mercurian. As she settles in with the folks at Earth House, Suleta receives a call from Elan's series of Pale Technologies, another member of the Benaret Group's top three, asking her if they can meet. Nervously wondering if she's been asked on a date, Suleta agrees. Meanwhile, Elan, along with the Pale Technologies researcher by the name of Belmiria, analyzed Suleta's aerial and deduced that its movements were too synergized with the pilot to be anything other than a Gundam. Seeing as Suleta is still alive despite controlling a Gundam, Elan wonders if she's an enhanced human like him and questions if she's borrowing someone else's face as well. Belmiria asks if he's happy to have found someone like him. But Ilan gives a curt reply that he's simply doing his job. The next day, Soleta and Ilan meet. And Ilan uses the excuse that his mobile suit is undergoing maintenance to have Soleta bring out Ariel and help him inspect the dueling chambers. He takes the opportunity to ask if he can pilot Ariel himself. This allows him to determine that the machine is running on gun technology that doesn't negatively affect the pilot. This draws out his ire, as she doesn't face any of the consequences that plagued his own life. He exits the Gundam and tells Soleta that unlike her, who sees Ariel as family, he sees it as nothing other than a curse. Taken aback by a sudden shift in tone, Soleta is stunned when Ilan challenges her to a duel with the condition that if he wins, he will take Ariel away from her. At a different location, Belmiria approaches Prospera and confirms that she is a survivor of Vanitas and that Ilan's mobile suit, Faract, is in fact a Gundam. She asks Prospera what her goal is, and remarks there's no use in trying to avenge what happened to Vanatis. Prospera ignores her questions and instead asks how many Gundam pilots Pale Technologies went through before Ilan. This silences Belmiria, and Prospera walks away. Meanwhile, due to his repeated failures, Ghoul is told to pack his bags and leave the Jeddak house on orders from his father. He bids his younger brother Lauda farewell and tells him to look after the family in his stead before leaving. In preparation for the duel, Belmiria performs some tests on Ilan and after getting the results, she informs him that he won't have a problem in the next fight. Ilan reads between the lines and deduces that he won't survive beyond that. A chirpy man with the same face as Ilan walks into the room, referring to the other Ilan as his body double. This Ilan reveals that defeating Soleta will allow the body double to get his face as well as his life back. The day of the duel arrives and both parties enter the arena. Suleta announces that if she wins, she wants Ilan to tell her more about himself. This angers Ilan, who attacks and tells her that he's nothing but a disposable pawn. With a Gundam of his own, he manages to corner Suleta more than any of her previous duels. But after a hard-fought battle, Suleta manages to attain victory. As reward for her victory, Ilan agrees to meet Saleta at a park. But for his defeat and lack of any further use, the four co-CEOs of Pale Technologies decide to get rid of Ilan, whom they refer to as Enhanced Person Number 4. Belmiria pleads for him to be spared, but they're unmoved and simply tell her to start preparing the next one. Ilan's execution is carried out while Saleta waits patiently for him to arrive. 
Some time later, the Pale Technologies leadership attend a meeting with Vim Jedirk and Saria Zanelli, leader of Grassley Defense Systems, third of the Benarid Group's top three. They openly acknowledge that Faract is a Gundam. Using this information as leverage, Sarius proposes that all three join forces. While Soleta's thoughts are occupied by the now missing Elan, she and Moirene receive invitations to join an incubation party, a place for people to present ideas for new companies in hopes of finding investors. Hoping Elan might show up, Soleta convinces Moirene to go with her. The two bring Nika and another boy from Earth House Martin as their guests and arrive at the party. Judging Soleta will become a nuisance if left unchecked, the Pale leadership send the original Elan Cirrus to meet her, much to his annoyance. Elan reveals himself to Soleta and excuses his absence by claiming he was away on urgent Pale business. He then brings her to the main stage to say a few words as the school's current holder. During her speech, the Pale's CEO revealed to everyone that their fair act was in fact a Gundam created by a rogue team within the company, and through it, they're able to maintain evidence that Ariel is one as well. They proclaim they will disband the division that developed Faract and scrap the machine, but that Ariel needs to be destroyed as well. Both Vim and Sarius also lend voices and urge Delling to ratify the motion. Before he can act, however, Moirene arrives to Soleta's aid. Pointing to Soleta's outstanding health despite piloting Ariel, Moirene puts forth the idea that she be allowed to purchase Shinsei and Pale's Gundam development teams and incorporate them into a new company, Gund Arm Incorporated, to create next generation Gundams that does not harm its user. She manages to convince her father, who provides her with some funding for this new company, signaling the approval. This opens the floodgates for Maureen in order to receive funding from several backers at the party, establishing her company, much to the chagrin of the Benaird Group's top three. With the company launched, Moirene arrives at Earth House and announces it will serve as Gundarm Inc.'s new HQ and all students there are her first employees. Though caught off by this absurd recruitment tactic, they all agree to join. Moirene takes a letter with her to meet Prospera so she can learn everything about Ariel. No longer needing to hide it, Prospera readily admits Ariel is a Gundam, much to Soleta's shock. She hands over all the data she has to Moirene and tells Soleta that she kept everything a secret in order to protect her. Convinced by that explanation, Soleta happily heads back to school with Moirene. On their journey back, they meet Shadik Sinelli, Sarius's adopted son, as well as an old acquaintance of Moirene. He offers his help in running the new company, but Moirene waves him off. Realizing the cost of research and mass manufacturing would be too steep for their current budget, Moirene decides to meet Belmeria in order to figure out a viable business model for the company. Speaking with her, she learns the original intent behind the development of gun technologies. Now, with this inspiration, she returns to Earth House and shares a video of Dr. Cardo speaking on the medical potential of Gund. She announces this will be the direction their company will work towards and gains everyone's approval. Before work can begin, however, Moirene is blindsided by a sudden announcement. New regulation is passed at Astakasia on the behest of Shadik, who puts their company's survival at risk. An angry Moirene confronts Shadik, who tells her to reconsider his earlier partnership offer. Once again, Moirene emphatically refuses. Now, with both sides at an impasse, they decide to settle the matter with a duel. Terms are set. Should Shadik lose, he is to never interfere with the company ever again. Should he win, he becomes the owner of Gund Arm Inc. Agreeing to the terms, Shadik has the duel changed into a 6 vs 6 battle in an attempt to stack the odds in his favor. Members of Earth House participate in the duel alongside Soleta, but as most of them are engineers rather than pilots, the match is extremely one-sided. The members of Team Grassley use their superior skills and coordination to either eliminate or to disable most of their opponents until Soleta finds herself alone in a 1 for 6. Team Grassley also make use of Antidote an anti-Gundam weapon to interfere with Ariel's normal functioning, forcing Soleta to control the Gundam like a regular mobile suit. Although seemingly on the ropes, Soleta refuses to give up. She apologizes to Ariel for always relying on it to fix her problems, but tells the machine that she wants to do her part to protect Moirene and the company. In response, 
Ariel buzzes and releases a barrier that overrides Antidote. Now free to move normally, Saletta makes quick work of three members of Team Grassley. Although Shadik and the rest manage to corner her, the remaining members of Team Earth fire a long-distance beam which eliminates Shadik, thus winning the match. With this obstacle now cleared, Gundarmed Inc. begin operating in earnest. Two months pass and progress is made on a prototype prosthetic leg powered by gun technology. While the others work on development, Moireen spends her time at the Benaret Group's headquarters managing company finances. She discusses the results with her father and earns his rare approval. After a two-week stint at HQ, she heads back to school on Gundarmed Inc.'s new company ship. Meanwhile on Ostacasia, Shadik receives word from his father that Vim is planning another assassination attempt on Delling. Hearing this, Shadik proposes that they join forces with Vim. Sarius gives Shadik his tacit approval, but tells him failure will result in Shadik losing his position against the Grassleys. Shadik makes a call to someone on Earth named Naji and gives him the job of killing Delling. They decide to make their move when Delling goes to plant Kita, a Benaret Group factory, as the security there is handled by Jeddurk Heavy Machinery. After finishing the call, Shadik thanks the person who facilitated his contact with Naji, who turns out to be none other than Nika Nanara. Ghoul, having lost his position amongst the Jeddurk, decided to leave everything behind and work as a low-level spacecraft maintenance worker under a fake name. He coincidentally ends up on a cargo ship to plant Kida for his job. The very cargo ship which Shadik's assassins decide to commandeer in order to infiltrate the plant. Having finished another test with the prosthetic legs, Saleta runs into Alan, or more specifically his new double enhanced person number five. In a bid to seduce Saleta to gain access to Ariel, this new Alan plants the idea in her head that she's just a shield that Moireen uses to avoid marriage offers. While she runs away from him, the idea sticks, and when she meets the recently returned Moireen, she starts second-guessing all her words and her actions. Moireen, on the other hand, Completely oblivious to the sudden change in attitude, tells Saleta to come to plant Kida with her to pick up Ariel, which had been undergoing repairs after the duel with Shadik. All members of Gundarmed Inc. arrive at Plant Kida in their new ship. While in the factory's depths, Delling and Prospera have a secret meeting where she commends him on the smooth progress of a project called Quiet Zero. She hands him some data taken from Ariel's recent duels, claiming that this would allow Quiet Zero to proceed to its final stage. Simultaneously, Shadik receives word from Vim, who is also on Plant Kida, to begin the operation in two hours, giving Vim enough time to leave safely. Shadik, however, gives Naji the green light to begin immediately, having decided to eliminate Vim alongside Delling. Naji and his group, the Dawn of Fold, use the hijacked cargo ship that Ghoul is on to approach the plant. Suleta, feeling morose, calls Prospera and confesses her fears. Prospera tells her to come to the hangar where she's waiting with Ariel. Before she can leave, Saleta is confronted by Moireen, who happened to overhear the conversation. After chasing and catching the flustered Saleta, Moireen scolds her before giving her a hug, expressing how much their friendship means to her. Delighted, Saleta hugs her back. Outside, the Dawn of Fold members drop out of their ship in mobile suits, which include a couple of Gundams piloted by two girls, Sophie and Noria, and initiate an attack. Vim, realizing Shadik has double-crossed him, is enraged and decides to engage his attackers head-on by grabbing a mobile suit of his own. Being separated from Moireen due to the attack, Suleta heads for the hangar where Ariel is stored in order to join the fight. Moireen, meanwhile, heads for an elevator where she's reunited with her father. The impact from the fighting outside heavily damages the interior, causing shrapnel to injure many of the evacuees, including Delling, who uses his body to protect Moireen. In another area of Plant Kida, members of Gundarmed Inc. are beset by heavy fire from the outside and begin to evacuate. While the rest leave, Nika, realizing who the attackers are, signals that she is Shadik's ally, causing them to stop. But to her dismay, this act is witnessed by an alarmed Martin. Ghoul manages to find an opening and sneaks into one of his kidnappers' mobile suits. He leaves the cargo ship, only to be attacked by a defender of Plant Kida. With no way to communicate, the initially hesitant ghoul fights back in self-defense and stabs his opponent. Suddenly, 
Comes, come back online, and he announces himself only to find to his horror that the person he just stabbed was his father. He tries to get them to eject from the mobile suit, but the machine explodes before his eyes. Suleta reaches the hangar, only to find armed hijackers had arrived before her. She hides, but is nearly found when her mother comes to the rescue, killing the assailants. Horrified at their deaths, Suleta freezes in fear. But Prospera, in an eerily cheerful manner, tells Suleta she needs to fight so she can save the people that she loves. Now jolted out of panic by her mother's words, Suleta stands and heads to pilot the newly repaired and upgraded aerial. Using a gigantic energy rifle, she manages to hold back the enemy of Gundams long enough for reinforcements to arrive. Donna Fold is forced to retreat, and Naji announces the mission's failure to Shadik. With the enemies withdrawing, Soleta uses aerial sensors to locate Moirene. She finds her transporting her father's injured body to safety, where she stumbled upon by a remaining member of Donna Fold. Before the man can shoot them both, Soleta bursts in with Ariel and slaps the man into the ground, crushing him into nothing. While Soleta exits Ariel and cheerfully offers Moirene her hand, the petrified Moireen stares in horror at all the blood and asks Saleta why she is smiling before calling her a murderer. <laughs>